The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. We know God hears our prayers and answers them. Pastor Benny's evangelism and healing ministry takes him around the world. But he has made it a priority to spend time in prayer for you. Send Pastor Benny your prayer requests and let him come into agreement with you. In addition, the ministry staff will pray for you before your request is sent to Israel, where for 30 days, the saints in Jerusalem will agree with you. So write today and come into agreement with him for your needs to be met. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. And to Jesus be all the praise and the glory. Listen, you're going to love this program today because Miles Monroe is with me here from the Bahamas. And every time he's on the program, our phones just ring off the hook. And Thank you. So it's good to be back. Listen, Praise this God. is heaven here. Welcome to I the mean, Bahamas. It's beautiful. I keep telling people God lives in the Bahamas, but <laughs> yes. they have to come and see it. And Last night we were at the church. I was yes. preaching at the church, uh, Pastor Miles, and uh, the Prime Minister came last night. Yes. I am amazed by the fact that he is such a strong Christian. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And, and his testimony is so strong. The influence God has given you is really remarkable. Thank you. In this country. He is Mr. Ambassador now. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank well, you. Well, didn't they, didn't they just uh, give you that office, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So you are officially? Ambassador at large. That means everybody I go in the world, I got to represent my country and my government. So Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, We're going to talk about the kingdom because nobody explains and really can, can minister to us about the kingdom of God like Pastor Miles Monroe. Now, if you've, you've written some amazing books, actually three of them, I think, or more. Yes. Uh, this is the first one yeah, that we wrote. It's Rediscovering, Rediscovering the Kingdom. Rediscovering the Kingdom, yeah. May I ask you, before I ask you any, any question, why did God give you this? tremendous truth. I mean, there was a whole lot of preachers out there that don't preach that. Yeah. I think it's because of where he had me conceived and You know in what, the that Caribbean. has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Uh, he also made sure that I was able to experience both sides of the human drama, and that is I was born in a kingdom, 1954, and then we became independent as a nation, which means so I also experienced democracy. Yeah. And that unique experience prepared me to understand scripturally in an experiential way. Yeah. What is the difference between a kingdom and a democracy? Uh, Pastor Benny, one of the things that's very interesting is that most of our theologians that have produced a lot of our work were never born in a kingdom. So they don't have the experience of the biblical concepts of kingdom. So much of our theology was written by people who never experienced kingdom life and the Bible is about a kingdom. You know, and a ever kingdom. since ever since I've heard you, I have had to readjust my mentality right. about the Bible. Yes. Because now when I read the Bible, I'm thinking king, kingdom. Kingdom. Yes. And boy, it just puts a new light on it. We got about thirty thousand letters and emails in a one week when people heard just a little bit about the kingdom, uh, and most of those are from pastors. They are from people who are Bible teachers, and they say you have caused us to go back and re-examine the Bible. Could we talk about the concept of the kingdom? What do you mean by that in your book? You know, in this book, yeah. I introduce a book talking about ideas because ideas control everything. Everything we see around us used to be an idea. The shirt that we wear used to be an idea in someone's sure. mind. The shoes on our feet used to be an idea. These cameras used to be an idea. Uh, everything that we see, our houses used to be an idea. Ideas not only control the world, but the world is run by dead men's ideas. 
Wow. Holy cow, right? Yeah, Aristotle, Socrates, yeah. Plato. Right. They created democracy yeah, as an idea. Right. And so they ruled the world from their grave. Well, the concept that a person has determines how they see life. The Bible has a different concept than what we have been preaching and teaching. For example, kingdom concept is opposite to democracy con concept. Uh, so if your concepts are wrong, your conclusions will be wrong. If your conclusions are wrong, your theology is wrong. Can okay, I explain that? Explain the concept of a kingdom. Yes. A kingdom concept is the idea that God invented. God was the first king. Matter of fact, the Bible says he's the king of glory. The Bible calls him the ancient king, which means the oldest one that is in existence. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And he produced the idea when he first created the heavens and the earth. He's called the king of glory, which is an invisible country, heaven. Wow. Then he wanted to extend his wow. kingdom beyond heaven, so he created a physical universe. And he created the, the, the heavens and the earth so he could extend his kingdom. All kingdoms want to expand. And that's why kingdom concept is so critical. God not only is the first king, but he produced children who he created to be kings over the earth. So he not only became a king, through creation of the invisible world, he became the king of kings, who are his kids. So we are kings over the physical realm of earth. He is our king, so he's the king of kings, yes, so he established the first kingdom. And in this book, I yes, talk please. about the concepts of kingdoms, and you'll find uh, in this book, the concepts are 26 concepts of a kingdom. Which, which we're um, going to talk about, right? Yes, we're going to talk gonna... about them, the 26 Beautiful. concepts. Then in this book, I talk about the nine principles of a kingdom that makes those concepts work. And this is why the two books are so important together. This one deals with changing a person's mind to think like a kingdom, which is what you talked about earlier. Exactly. That when you heard it, you had to change your thinking. For example, all kingdoms have kings. Kings are also automatically lords. They are lord. All kingdoms must have a constitution. They must have laws. They must have what they call symbols. Every kingdom must have a, um, a code of ethics that people live by. Every kingdom must have a body of law that creates keys through which kingdoms work. So when Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, yeah. he wasn't talking about you know, uh, like things we use to open doors, even though that's what the principles do. He was talking about authority to have access to government power. That's the laws of the kingdom. That is so powerful. the concepts of a kingdom are critical, and there are 26 of them I talk about in this book. I would recommend that when you read this book, they read the last chapter first. <laughs> it's the only book I say read the last chapter first. It's because in the last chapter, for example, I list the 26 concepts. Wow, that's wonderful. And to understand the Bible, you must understand the 26 concepts. For example, the first concept of a kingdom Now, is are you going to talk about this right, right now, about the concept? I'm going to talk about two of them. Okay, please. I'd like The that. kingdom concept of kings. A king is never voted into power. That's why you can't vote Jesus out of power. A king's authority is in his birthright. You don't make Jesus king. That's right. He was born <laughs> once. A king cannot be voted out of power. So whether we dislike or like Jesus, all the discussions about Jesus on the CNN network and all the other networks, they cannot touch him because his authority is not voted in. You can't vote him out. <laughs> right. A king's word <laughs> is law in his kingdom. Oh, that it. means the laws in the kingdom are not a product of Congress and the Supreme Court and Senate. It's the mind of the king. Completely different. Thirdly, a king personally owns everything in his kingdom. That's a law. The president of the United States doesn't own the country. The prime minister of my country doesn't own the Bahamas. But in a kingdom, the concept is the king owns the country and the people and the animals and the ocean. He owns everything. You know, can we on the program tomorrow talk about all of these concepts? Absolutely. And on this one, I want to ask you some questions. First, I want to ask about God's priority. What is God's priority? That's probably one of the most important questions because we have been focusing on what I call the minor and we've been missing the major. Well, how true, how right. Priority how? has to do with what's the most important thing on earth. And Jesus stated God's priorities. Listen, precious people, this is powerful. It's found in Matthew chapter 6. He began, first of all, by telling us what is not our priority, which we've made our priority. 
our priority as humans is food, clothes, water, house, land, security, and self-actualization. Exactly. Which is what Maslow talks about. Every human being watching the program right now, they go to a job or they go to the farm, wherever they're watching this, to get food, water, clothes, covering, protection, security, and self-actualization. Jesus began his statement by condemning all of that. He says, why do you worry? Why do you make priority of food and clothes and land and, and car and house? He says, the Father knows you need those things. Right. They are not your priority. Then he says, only pagans prioritize oh, those things. <laughs> then he says this, he says, but seek ye first. In other words, first means priority. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things, he says, will be added to your life. So God's priority is only two things. Spend the rest of your life seeking his kingdom. That means studying it, exploring it, pursuing it, trying to understand it, getting to know how it works. He says, you do that with your life. And then he says, seek righteousness. Righteousness is not a religious word, Pastor Benny. It's from the courts of law. To be righteous means to be rightly positioned with an authority of government. So if you stop at a red light, you are being righteous because you are literally obeying the law to stay in line with the government. If you run a red light, that's an unrighteous act because you've broken relationship with the government. That's right. So he says, seek the government of God first and then seek to stay in line with the government. Do those two things. Don't sin. Don't break the law. Don't violate the covenants. Stay in line with the government. Stay positioned properly and everything you need will be added to your life. That's the most powerful message of Jesus Christ. That's why his first announcement was, change your thinking. The kingdom of heaven has returned to earth. So, how do people seek the kingdom? Exactly what I said. Number one, they got to get to the king. Absolutely. I love it. That's it. <laughs> because the center of a kingdom is a person, not an organization. Now, hear that. This is the key right here. A king is the source of a kingdom. It comes out of his very own birthright. Wow. So you can first seek the king. That's why Christ says, if you come unto me, That's right. then you'll know the kingdom Absolutely. of God. One time he told the disciples, he says, the kingdom of God is with you. That means he was with them. He said, but it shall be in you later. That's right. Why? I'm going to take the spirit of the governor of the kingdom and put him in you later. <laughs> on the day of Pentecost, he breathed on them. They literally received the kingdom. Because the kingdom is a person first. Then it is lived out in administration. I would like you to define the kingdom to oh, someone who may have never heard yeah. and understood it. And by the way, precious people, <laughs> it's lovely here. It's raining a little bit, so we're, we're getting splashed and it's I'm loving lovely. it. Just hope it doesn't mess my hair. That's all I care about. <laughs> no, it won't. What is a kingdom? I love this. <laughs> yes, first please, of all, define a kingdom. First, let me tell you what it is not. Please. A kingdom is not a democracy, it is not a religion, and it's not a, a republic. A kingdom is a governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent, producing a citizenry of people who express his culture and reflect his nature. Wait, 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 wait. One more time. <laughs> This is too heavy. This is powerful and wealthy. One more time. Listen carefully. This is awesome, really. Yes. First, a kingdom is not a religion. I got to say that because we have reduced the Bible to a religion. Exactly. A kingdom is not a religion. Secondly, it's not a democracy. So if you're born in the Western world, when you pick up the Bible, the Bible is in danger because you are going to superimpose your cultural experiences on the book, and the book is not a democracy. Secondly, it is not a republic. That means there's no president in a kingdom. You, you, you don't vote a president into power. A kingdom is, and I was born in one, a kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, My God. his purpose, and his intention. Listen, producing will in, that's right. and purpose and, and intention. intention. In other words, a kingdom is affected by the mind of the king, not legislation of a group of people. That's why Jesus said, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. A kingdom is impacted by the personal will of the king. What the king desires, what the king manifests, kingdom manifests. It produces a citizenry, that means people, who 
reflect the culture of the king and manifest the nature of the king. Now, I want to talk to you about that. Very important. Nature. Yes. Are you telling me that God Almighty wants his nature in each one of us? Manifest. The word nature is the word kabod in Hebrew. Same word as glory. Hey, I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that, Miles. Really? You see this? This little flower here. Yeah. It's an interesting flower. Uh, if, you, if you get another one of these, you might find a bud somewhere. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's all right. One. I'm going to take this apart. If, you, if this flower was a bud, it would be a green hard ball. Right. But this flower would be inside that ball. Correct. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the real glory of that, that bulb, the, the bud, would be the flower open. So this is the glory. Glory means the full expression of a thing. It means the weight, the full weight of something. Kaboy. So God wants to fill the earth with his full nature. The glory Jesus. of God was wow. put in Adam. Image means nature. Adam lost that nature when he disobeyed God. So the glory has been smothered by our rebellion. That's why all of the planet is waiting for the glory of the manifestation of the sons of God. The plant knew what Adam used to look like. This, wow. The animals are weeping. They're saying, why can't we see the true nature of God? Because the nature of God was covered up by the sin of man. That's why Jesus said, I came to reveal the glory of God. And then he says, may the earth be filled with the glory, the nature oh, of God. Man. People need to look at us and My see what Lord. heaven is like just by our lifestyle, our attitudes, our cultural response, our disposition. Now, culture, everything. you said culture, that even the culture of God. Talk about that. This is amazing. You know, we can talk about that when we get to this, this other book because that's what it's all about. Please, I Listen, want to hear this. Religion produces a system. A kingdom produces a culture. Say that again. A religion produces a system that people try to follow, a list of rules. That's the problem right now. The kingdom produces a culture. That means a lifestyle that is natural. That's why God really hates the laws written on tablets. He says, I don't want you to be following a list of laws. I want to write them on your mind and in your heart so they become a natural lifestyle. See, we're supposed to love one another because it's our culture, not because he told us. Boy, right. We're supposed to forgive our enemy, not because we are under guilt, but because it's our culture. In other words, in our kingdom, it's our culture to love our enemies. It's just what we do. It's our culture to give. If we got to force people to give to this ministry, they are still religious. But if they are in the culture of heaven, and they are part of the kingdom of God's citizenship, and they see that you as an ambassador represent their country, heaven, taking the good news of the kingdom around the world, then giving to you becomes a cultural act, not a force Jesus, that's act. Amazing. That's why giving is such a pressure, such a depression in local church, because it's a religion. Giving is supposed to be natural. So you're culture. saying religion is bondage? Absolutely. Listen, the number one opposition of Jesus Christ on earth was never sinners. That's right. It was religious people. I rest my case. Yeah. He never woed or rebuked or damned any sinner. But he woed and damned religious people. Why? Let me read a scripture for you. He said in Matthew chapter 20, he says, You Pharisees and scribes, you lock the kingdom up in men's faces. You will not enter. Neither would you allow those who would enter to enter. Let me quote that again. He was talking to religious leaders. He said, you Pharisees and teachers of the law, you lock the kingdom up in men's faces. That means you don't even want to talk about it. He says, and you don't want to enter it. Then he says, you are also preventing those who want to enter to enter. How? By giving them religion. Religion is the greatest opposition to the kingdom. It's the greatest threat to the kingdom because religion attempts to substitute itself for the kingdom of God. Therefore, religion is not of God. Religion, God was never religious. Jesus Christ was not a religious man. So it's satanic, you're saying? Well, you know, you got to conclude that just by what you're thinking. You see, anything that keeps you out of the kingdom of God is anti-God. Jesus never joined a religious group. He never became a part of the Sanhedrin Council. And when they even arrested him and put him before the Sanhedrin Council, he never answered a word. Why? That was a religious trial. He's not a religious man. 
He didn't speak and tell even before God. Pilate, but now he's talking to a kingdom. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. <laughs> he when spoke before are, Pilate, but, but not before the Right. So when they was, arrested him, the religious leaders arrested Jesus. Yeah. They put him on trial that night. Correct. He didn't answer them. Why? That's right. Wrong courtroom. He's a king. He's not a priest. But he's not he a religious leader. Pilate, though. He went before the, the, the kingdom. And then he could now talk. Oh, my Lord. So when Pilate asked him, are I gotta, you a king? Brother, i got to stand up and give him praise here. So this Pilate is asked amazing. Him, Pilate asked him a question, Benny. He says, are you a king? Jesus says, ah, I can talk now. He whoa, says, whoa, 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 he says, whoa, whoa, he says whoa, not whoa, only am I a king, whoa. for this reason was I born, he says. And he says, my kingdom didn't come from the earth. It came to the earth, but it's not from the earth. It's interesting that the high priest, Caiaphas, had to adjure him by God Absolutely. to speak, and only then did he answer him. Absolutely. While the whole time he was quiet. It but was the wrong courtroom. Pilate talks to him. Let me tell you something that may amaze that you. That is really amazing. Jesus said he couldn't find great faith nowhere in Israel. Do you know where he found it? With a kingdom man, a centurion. That's right. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the he Lord was, to speak the word? Roman. He was a Roman. That's right. Why? He was thinking kingdom. See, in a religion, you got to appease your gods by giving them gifts. Man, this in is a awesome. kingdom, you demand things because you are a citizen. Members, awesome, really. members work on emotions. Citizens work on rights. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again. Members. They get things done through emotional feelings. That's why we cry, we pray out to God, oh, please, God, and we never get answers. A citizen doesn't cry before a court or before a judge. They make demands based on a constitution. So when, you, so the, when that soldier spoke to Jesus, he was, he was dealing with constitutional power. So Jesus says, I've never seen anyone who understood the kingdom like this man, not even in Israel. Because they keep long prayers, begging, much speaking. He said, this man just simply said, look, if you're a king, your word is law. If you speak, it becomes law. My servant will be healed. Christ said, this is kingdom thinking. I cannot contain myself. I'm sorry. I'm trying Let to Let me give you one more here. point. Just bless me. <laughs> There's know. no such thing. I can't thing. handle it anymore. Please. I love you too. Please. Well, we got to get this right, Pastor. Please King. say it. There's no such thing as being a member of a nation. You're right. You can only be a member of a religion. That's so true. You can be a citizen of a country. See, you can dismember someone, but you can't decitizenize them. How right. That's why the Bible says our citizenship is in it's heaven. It's in heaven, exactly. A king doesn't have members of his country. He has citizens of his country. We're going to talk more about this tomorrow and the concepts of the kingdom. We're almost out of time. Oh. Oh, Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you I praise. Can you believe what you just heard here? I mean, you're saying basically church membership doesn't exist in the Bible. It doesn't exist. When Paul refers, Jesus never used the word member. That's never. Amazing. When Paul was using an allegory, he said, we are a part of a community, just like the body is a part of the body. So when, 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 when somebody says, well, how many members do you have in your church? <laughs> and that's a serious question. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's an illegal question. You never say to anyone, how many citizens do you have in your organization? My God. Because citizens don't belong to a pastor, <laughs> they belong to a government. Listen, we're stirring people up, I'm sure, already, and causing <laughs> many to question. But th this is powerful, and it's in the Bible. I mean, Absolutely. Jesus never spoke about members. Absolutely. And this is why, for those who are watching us today, the reason why their prayers are not being answered, even getting healed, is because they believe they get emotional wow. enough, God will feel sorry for them. You but you don't get healed because God feels sorry for you. You, you get healed because that woman who went before the you judge. You're going to talk about this tomorrow because about <laughs> members get emotional. I, I love it. I've never heard that before. Now, all right, listen. These two. Tell me about all these incredible books you this have. This is the first one everybody should get. It's called Rediscovering, Rediscovering. the Kingdom. Okay, great. This one teaches you about the 26 concepts of a kingdom. Everyone should read this book to, re to reconnect to a kingdom mindset. And this one is Kingdom Principles. This deals with how kingdoms work. Very important. And I want to say to your, your viewers today wow. that the publishing company and myself, we are going to give 1,200 copies of each one of these books to anyone who calls in right now. And they commit a gift of $100 or more to help you win those millions of souls. Jesus, thank if you Lord. call in right now to the Benny Hinn program, and say, Pastor Benny, I'm going to give $100 or more to help you win souls. We will send you one of these books as a gift 
an appreciation back to you. And listen, we got 1,200 of them. Now, if you send 200 or more dollars, you can get both books. This will be the gift from Benny Hinn Ministry to you on Pastor Miles and the publishing company. We want you to know that the kingdom of God deserves to be spoken to all the world. Amen, amen, amen. Tomorrow, don't miss the program with Miles Monroe as we keep talking about kingdom principles and a whole lot more. Yes. Love you. And now remember, nothing is impossible with God. Bye-bye. We believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to humanity and the troubles on this earth. The gospel, the gospel, and only the gospel is the solution. Pastor Benny Hinn is passionate about reaching the lost by obeying the mandate for all believers to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm talking about souls. Save my soul. Men and women around the world who have not heard the gospel. It's our duty, our privilege, our responsibility to tell them who else will. Nobody will. You can help touch millions around the world as you catch Pastor Benny's vision to use every available resource and opportunity to reach the lost. How can we preach the gospel without support? The gospel is free, but the means to deliver the gospel is expensive. Please go to your phone now and give your gift of $1,500 or $100 for souls. The minute you make a decision to support the gospel, the minute you say, Lord, I will spend the rest of my life seeing men and women come to the cross. When you make that decision, God Almighty will bless everything you do in life. Call now or give online. And for your generous gift of $100 or more, Pastor Benny will send you your choice of Miles Monroe's informative and fascinating books, Rediscovering the Kingdom and Kingdom Principles. You can receive both volumes for a gift of $200 or more. These resources will build your faith as you invest in souls around the world. Thank you for catching Pastor Benny's vision and sharing his passion to see the lost saved. Jesus came to give his life for men and women, for me, and for you, to have the privilege to tell the world, awesome. Thanks for watching the program today. I pray you were blessed. And I want to talk to you, those of you that have never contacted our ministry, you've been watching the programs, or maybe you've been to our meetings but have never yet contacted the ministry. I have a free gift for you. And all you have to do today is simply write our ministry or go online. Benny Hinn, Post Office Box 16, 2000, Irving, Texas, or simply BennyHinn.org. And what I want to send you are the promises of God from Scripture. We have... God's promises for victorious living or God's promises for healing. Make sure to get these today. They're free and all you have to do is simply write us or go online. These will bless you tremendously and you have a choice of either the one on healing where I read all the healing scriptures from the Bible with beautiful music playing in the background or the promises for victorious living. Do it today. A million thanks for watching and the Lord bless you richly.